Hello everyone, let's talk about Python for the Unsolvable, using machine learning for chaos theory. So my name is Shri Kandurthi. I'm a student machine learning researcher based in the greater New York City area. I'm a member of the United States Technology Policy Committee, and we're working to guide responsible technology-oriented decision-making at all levels of government. In my research, I'm passionate about combining the fields of machine learning and physics, and that's really the focus of today's talk. You can reach me on Twitter at srkandurthi, um, and my GitHub is srivatsa-kandurthi. So today's agenda, we're going to kick off with a discussion on chaos theory. We're going to try and define what it is and give you some concrete examples. And we're going to keep the discourse at a high level so that we can ensure to supply an, an enough information to really get into the machine learning applications that are going to take up the bulk of this discussion. Um, and specifically, we're going to talk about physics-informed machine learning, an area that has evolved to understand um, physical scenarios through machine learning techniques. Um, the particular focus is on the physics-informed neural network, or PIN. Um, and we're going to bring together these discussions on chaos and physics-informed machine learning by talking about PINs for understanding the double pendulum, which is a particular chaotic scenario. So, what is chaos theory? We're going to start by getting a good understanding of this field of study. So it's an interdisciplinary study of apparently random dynamical systems. We call this interdisciplinary because we use math, particularly differential equations, which you'll see tend to be rather complex and nonlinear, um, and combine this math with scientific domains, problems in physics, chemistry, biology, even ecology, sociology, and traffic control. Um, and a question that we need to ask is, we say apparently random, but what is randomness? Why do we think that something is random? Well, one intuitive cause if it is if it appears complex, wild, or perhaps chaotic, which is really the namesake for chaos theory. Um, and another intuition is, um, We'll recognize that these chaotic systems tend to display a sort of dependency on initial conditions, a high sensitivity on these initial conditions um, beyond, say, uh, more uh, traditional dynamical systems. So this higher sensitivity also tends to give that appearance of randomness. Um, another way to think of this is that a minor perturbation to a system can lead to vastly different results. We'll show you some concrete examples of that later. But the point to note is that there are underlying patterns in such complex chaotic systems. So that means they are deterministic, deterministic and we can predict future um, outputs of these scenarios. They're not random. So here are two examples of chaotic systems to help you get an idea of chaotic behavior, particularly in physics problems. On the left is the three-body system. You can think of this as an orbital problem where three masses, planets or other orbital bodies, are in an isolated system and exert a radial force such as gravity on each other. Once these masses are released, they follow a behavior that exerts a high sensitivity to initial conditions. Or if you just take a look, it looks very chaotic and perhaps superficially you might think it's random, but we'll show in fact that it's not. On the right is the double pendulum. We're going to talk about this in much greater detail, but this is another chaotic system, and it's perhaps one of the most simple systems that still exerts chaotic behavior. It's a good comparison example because the simple is the simple pendulum is uh, the single pendulum is a very simple system, um, but by just adding one more free rod, we can uh, lead to very uh, chaotic results. So, to better understand chaos, let's go into more details on the double pendulum. First, let's set up the problem. Take a look at the figure. A massless rod of length L1 is attached to the ceiling, or the wall, and is free to rotate around its fixed point. At its end is a point mass M1. So far, this is identical to the setup for a single pendulum. However, attached to M1 is another massless rod of length L2, which need not equal length L1. And this rod has a mass M2 attached to its end, and this M2 is a point mass. The second rod is free to rotate about M1. This image should really help you visualize. 
and each rod can be displaced in angle theta 1 or theta 2, respectively, from its vertical. These are the degrees of freedom that we're going to use when we're deriving differential equations to model this problem. And by the way, the text excerpts that you're going to see uh, throughout this presentation are from my Jupyter notebook explaining the double pendulum and offering a simulation of it. So feel free to check out my GitHub to take a closer look at that. So now what we want to do is derive the differential equations governing the motion of the double pendulum. To do that, we're going to use Lagrangian mechanics. Lagrangian mechanics depends on the principle of least action also known as the stationary action principle. This you can think of as a formulation of classical mechanics. In essence, we're going to use a formula known as the Euler-Lagrange equation, which is shown on the screen um, right here. We're going to Euler, use the Euler-Lagrange equation to derive the differential equations. Um, and without going into too much detail, the Euler-Lagrange minimizes a functional which is, you can think of as a function of functions. Um, we're going to minimize a functional to obtain a function following a path of least action. Um, and this is, according to Lagrangian mechanics, applicable, applicable to a solution in classical mechanics. So you can find more details on this. There's a number of resources that you can use, or my GitHub page has the double pendulum simulation so that you can read more into this and some of the um, conditions as well. But what you need to know now is that um, by, uh, by uh, using these um, uh, the Lagrangian system of mechanics and deriving differential equations, we're showing that the double pendulum scenario is in fact deterministic. We can find equations that govern the motion of the double pendulum, so we can predict future states. However, these differential equations can't be analytically solved, meaning they can't be integrated to obtain an explicit function, and that'll lead us to the second half of the lecture a little later on, where we'll see how we can use um, machine learning to integrate or uh, construct surrogate models to um, represent the double pendulum's motion. And uh, here is a derivation for uh, theta 1, a differential equation for theta 1. Um, let's not go into too much detail on this. Again, you can check out the GitHub if you want those details. Um, but we supply as input to the Euler-Lagrange something known as the Lagrangian, which is given as kinetic energy minus potential energy. And we take several partial derivatives, time derivatives, trigonometric identities, and simplify. We end up with a differential equation noted all the way at the bottom. This is a second order equation governing theta one. And we're going to follow a very similar process for theta two. Start with the order Lagrange supplies input the Lagrangian, um, take partial derivatives, time derivatives, uh, trigonometric formulas to simplify, and we end up with these two differential equations. Uh, these are second order differential equations governing the motion, and immediately, right off the bat, you see a high degree of sensitivity to a number of factors, angles, masses, angular velocities, angular accelerations. So hopefully this gives you an understanding of why the behavior is chaotic. It's dependent on so many factors. And here's a quick testament to chaotic behavior. For the first mass, we see that we set theta 1 um, and theta 2 to 45 degrees. And then we make a minor adjustment to theta, two, uh, theta 1 for the second graph, where we set theta 1 to 90 degrees and achieve, as can be seen here, a vastly different output. Um, and on the contrary, for a simple single pendulum, such a change in input would create intuitively an intuitively predictable change. So just increasing the launch angle will still make it go roughly the same, and you can predict how it's going to be. But here, it's a lot harder to visualize, but we can in fact do it through the differential equations that we've derived. So now let's talk about physics-informed machine learning, where we have the goal of using machine learning to help us better understand complex physics. For example, in chaotic physics examples like the double pendulum, where we don't have analytical solutions, we might want to build surrogate models. There are several reasons why machine learning can help us with physics. Research has shown that uh, using machine learning for physics via physics-informed machine learning can decrease computational cost compared to other methods. We also don't need to come up with complex custom formulations for every single problem that we're trying to solve. And we know this because of the general, generalization capabilities of um, machine learning algorithms and neural networks. Another issue is uncertainty in experimental data. 
but we can deal with this very efficiently via um, machine learning methods, which have evolved to take care of uncertain um, data. And thanks to the decreased computational cost, we can have um, faster processing for real-time situations. Uh, some examples include live monitoring of environments and rapidly interpreting physics involved. So for example, watching a video feed of a cup and um, d uh, creating um, equations or formulas to demonstrate the heat flow or the uh, motion, the fluid motion of the vapor, things like that we can actually achieve. And there's research surrounding that. However, one concern is that machine learning models based purely on observational data may embed inherent biases um, in data collection and also generalize poorly. So our solution is to teach machine learning models physical laws. This is the approach taken by the authors of the Physics Informed Neural Network, which is what we're going to focus on in uh, this demonstration. So PINs are a deep learning method um, that synergize mathematical models of our world and observational data. What research shows is that they generalize well even if provided with noisy data due to the understanding of physical laws. And if you take a look at the figure, um, they're good for the middle case where we have some data available and some physical laws. What that means is that the data may be noisy or we don't have enough data to simply um, use traditional uh, machine learning methods or we're lacking a whole term in a differential equation or some factor like that. Um, and it, pins are really good for this case where otherwise we would have, have, would have either worked towards more data or better physical understanding. Instead, we can use pins to tackle the middle case. So how do we embed physical laws into our neural networks? This is the money question. And it turns out the solution is simple and beautiful. We introduce a learning bias, which is dubbed as a soft approach. Um, essentially, we're going to tailor the loss function to embed um, an understanding of physical laws. So I'll show you a deeper example of that later, but you can also think of this as multitask learning where um, we're adjusting the loss function to optimize for both physics and the data. So if we take a look at the architecture for the physics informed neural network, we can see here that we can write a loss function for both data and differential equation residuals. And um, this is also considered a regularization constraint where we're restricting the output domain of the neural network to physically viable solutions. And through this approach, research is actually showing that these pins are quite effective compared to other machine learning approaches. Um, pins are really exciting and will certainly catalyze the development of machine learning applications to physics. But how do we implement them? So DeepXDE is a Python library that's open source and it's designed to model differential equations. It's very useful as a research tool with ready to go implementations of physics informed neural networks and other research such as the uh, deep operator network. And it's a good educational tool suitable for coursework as well. And we're excited that the Python community can make use of a tool like this. So before we part, let's use pins to model the behavior of the double pendulum. So in our simulation, we uh, generate simulated data using numerical methods, but in an experimental setting, training data could come from real life measurements. In this case, we simulate a double pendulum with a set of initial conditions. Um, from there, we're going to run the simulation from 0 to 10 seconds with a time step of 0 0.001 seconds. So we obtain 10,000 data points. What's most exciting is the train slash test split. We use only 1% of the data uh, to train, and we train for 50,000 iterations. And the loss function is custom, where it's built on the differential equation for the double pendulum, as well as the training data. And here are the results, and it's absolutely incredible. So with a very small amount of data, as you can see in the right graph, we obtain a test error on the magnitude of 10 to the negative third. Um, on the left is a graph of the uh, numerical simulation, and on the right we have the predictions. And as you can see, they are uh, very, very strong. And we achieve very strong results for data two as well, because we're able to embed physical laws into the loss function, even though we don't have that much data training data, only 1% um, training data split, we still get really, really solid performance. And uh, we wouldn't have the um, orange line in a real scenario. This is really just to show the test performance. And there we are, machine learning, chaotic physics, and how Python is bridging the two to solve the unsolvable. Thank you so much. 
Here's my contact information. Do reach out with any questions. Take care.